Hi folks, welcome back to Fishing with Den. Sorry I'm not my usual bully self this morning, but um, I've got a bit of a disaster going on. I've broken my pole. I went fishing and it was windy. And then a gust of wind literally came out of nowhere, ripped the pole sideways to the left. I'd got it in the, the butt strap on the, the seat box. It tightened everything up and it's broken the end of my pole. Right, let's see if you can see a good view of that, but there you are, look. And also, not only has it got bits missing here, this is all loose, and there's a hole just here. Doesn't seem to have split all the way down the pole. Um, so, it wouldn't normally be such a disaster. I, I'd just go to the taco shop into the UK if I was in England, get a spare and that would be it. Um, unfortunately, I've got a big match coming up uh, next week and because I live in Australia, it's going to take at least two weeks to get delivery of a pole section because they don't sell poles in Australia, would you believe? So there's a bit of a problem. This gives me sort of seven metres of pole, maybe, maybe eight metres, I suppose. Um, but the place I'm going to be fishing so one I did last year, huge, great big venue, and it's mostly pole fishing, would you believe? Bit of feeder fishing, but mostly I caught on the pole last year, and I've got no way of sorting this out. The problem I've got is, I could try and order one of those um, carbon fibre repair kits where you get the cloth and you get uh, all the epoxy resin to go with it. So I thought, well, I'll look at that online and, yep, it was £25 and I thought, no problem. Picked in for postage and apparently it's a hazardous cargo. So now they want to charge me £90 for postage. So you're looking at £115 just for a repair kit. I'm just thinking, I'm stuck really. So I'm going to have to do some kind of bush fix. I've given it some thought overnight. Um, I did some research as well. It's always the case when you see these repairs, they either have a broken pole here, they join it together, or it's a longitudinal split and they sort that out. What they don't ever repair is that. Now the problem I've got is that I'm gonna to have to repair it with a different means. So what I've done, I went out to the local car store and I got myself one of these uh, repair kits, fiberglass repair kits. Did a bit of research on it and uh, you know fiberglass can be used for uh, going on rods. So this is actually a broken rod that I had from the past um, and I've just used some um, of the, the two-part epoxy on there to see how it works. And it seems to work okay but the problem I also had was that I did a test on that because I, I basically chopped a chunk out of that and tried to replicate this. Um, the fiberglass that comes with it is this horrible hairy stuff which you may be able to, to see and that's of no use to man the beast for the purposes I want it for. So I went and found something else and I found this woven cloth and that, I thought well that'll work fine. Turns out, when I tried to do the repair on here, I put the, the layer of uh, epoxy on, onto this, soaked up the um, fiberglass cloth, and tried to let it go a bit tacky and then put it on. Um, that didn't work, so I put a bit more on to make it really wet. And what the problem was is it just kept opening up, just like this. So that didn't work either then. So I know that the circumference of this is a lot more than the, sorry, a lot smaller and there's more bend on it than the circumference of this. But I'm only gonna get one shot at doing this. As I say, it's gonna be a bush fix and it's got to work. So I've kind of thrown that, that idea into uh, the rubbish bin, pile 13, and I've tried to come up with another idea. Uh, the problem I've got is, of course, even if I could find something to wrap that with, 
where we've got this broken area here, it's going to go flat, so it's not going to go in. So what I've done, I've taken the section here, which goes into it normally, and very carefully I've teased out all of the cracked areas in there and I've pulled out the, the loose flakes and sort of refitted everything down here so that it actually will slide in. So that's got that in. Now, obviously the problem I've got is, how do I now do that repair? Now the easiest one would be if I'd got a similar sort of section from an old pole, which I don't have because I gave them all away when I left England. If I had that though, I could chop off a section of a sleeve, slide it down the section here and put it over the top and epoxy it in place. As I say, I don't have one of those. So <laughs> necessity being the mother of invention, which one is it then? This one, got the old 3D printer working, made a sleeve. So what we're gonna do, if I get this right way around, is if I put this on here like that, this by the way weighs um, about 15 grams, which is kind of half an ounce. I just tease that gently on there, like that. That's actually quite a good fit. Now obviously you're gonna be worried about this plastic just not holding up against the, the pressure because the pressure on here is gonna be quite considerable. I'll come back to that in a second. But what this does do, it means that if I put that epoxy inside there, it'll actually give me the, the form around the, the circle there to get what I want. It's not gonna be perfect by any means. But that's the only plan I've got for the moment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some sandpaper and I'm just gonna gently sand down to the area I need to be. Right, and I'm just going to rough the, see that's actually moving already there, so I'm going to have to just gently rough this area up, give it a key to glue to. Doesn't have to be much, but just get that, and this is where I need to be careful again because I'm going around onto that broken section, but this is where I need some grip as well. Right, don't break, don't break, don't break. Well, I've got around it now. Somehow, I've got to try and hold. This is the flappy area, look, that bit there. i try and do that without breaking anything. So now I can come back up to this undamaged area. Luckily, this didn't split. So. I'll come up and I'll just key this whole area to a point where I've got to where I need to be. That's about it. I'll just wipe that off with a tissue. Just being very gentle again as to break anything. Obviously you can see the dust coming up on that. I'll put the tube back on again, just in case I've disturbed anything. And we'll do a final check with the other section of pole. And see if this will I catch something then. I really don't know if this is gonna work. Right, so that's how far it normally goes in. So it's not all that far, look. By the time you take about an inch, inch off that to accommodate for the area that's broken, it's not a lot to hold it, is it? So, one way or another, this is gonna have to work because I'm just gonna need this pole. I'm going to mix up some of this, put that there, I think. Mix up some of this resin, basically just polyester resin for this uh, fiberglass. I did actually do a few tests as I say yesterday. This is what came out of this pot here. In fact, I put some in this morning and that hasn't properly set yet, but this has actually cured. 
and it's probably three millimeters thick and it's very difficult to even it does bend but it doesn't break obviously you still need to reinforce it with some kind of cloth or fiber but bear with me what i'm going to do is i'm going to get this sleeve on first of all and then we'll worry about how to reinforce it just after that one of the options is once this is dry to just put a couple of wraps of this um, gaffer tape duct tape around the uh, the join and the sleeve rather um, because this stuff doesn't stretch now again it will add a little bit of weight so the other option might be if I've got it here somewhere I've lost it no, it's gonna be here somewhere but basically polyester cotton I can whip around the end to reinforce the plastic because as I say the plastic's quite strong it's just that there's a lot of pressure going to be going on there and I need it to be really strong oh and I will once I've got this working if it works um, before I go to that big tournament I'm gonna to take it down to Den's Pond and just see if it works down there if it works there I've got a chance but the problem is without a pole on these matches I really have no chance of winning and as I say I won it last year I'll actually put a, a link up above to last year's video where I won it and you'll see me fishing on the pole and luckily last year I was able to catch um, relatively close in but there are other times when you need to be further out so it's kind of one of those so that's roughed up or keyed we're all sorted out there and now a paintbrush And all being well, I'll be able to paint this on. Get this all painted up. Because if this doesn't work, I really am stuffed. Okay. So I've got a, a layer on everywhere. And now it's just a question of getting this slid down. Like that. Looks about right. I'll just this is where I need to be careful as well. It's kind of lot inside. I'm gonna be very gentle here. And I can't see what I'm doing because I'm showing you. <laughs> I'm just gonna get another bit of tissue and just wipe around the inside for any more excess. Now remember, there's also a hole in here, in that side, so I'm gonna be careful of that. Just gonna get rid of the main excess. What I'm gonna do now, just to be on the safe side, is I'm gonna take this section, I'm not gonna put it in just yet, what I've got, I was actually going to use some of that brown packaging tape, but I was in the pound shop yesterday and I found this really thin sellotape and I'm going to tape it onto there and then I'm going to insert that. So let me get this bit done and then we'll come back and show you how we're getting on. Peel that off. And with a bit of luck, this will now go in to here. making sure there's no flaky bits inside and that seems to work quite well this will also push up any resin into the fibers I'm hoping and I'm going to leave it there for a few minutes taking a bit of a risk on this because <laughs> I just don't want the whole thing to be stuck in there but I've got half an hour's um, curing time and I can gauge it by looking at when this starts to get a bit sticky. So I'm gonna give this a few minutes. I'm gonna put the kettle on, have a cup of tea, and we'll get back to you when I withdraw that and we'll decide what we're gonna do next by way of strengthening. Okay, well, I've given this about 10 minutes to um, start to go off a little bit and this bit tacky. So now I'm hoping this will pull out of here okay. Let's try it. 
Okay, well that was handy. Now I did actually do some tests as I said yesterday with this tape and it doesn't seem to stick too well. I was just a bit concerned that uh, because it was pushed in, it might have stuck rather too well. But now I'll take this tape off and I'm going to let that um, cure for the next few hours uh, and then see how we go. And then we'll come back and we'll do the final uh, strengthening on the outside of the, the sleeve there. Given it a couple of hours and this has now started to go off quite nicely. It's not properly cured yet, that's probably going to take at least 12 to 24 hours, but it's enough for me to do some final sort of cleaning up. Now, I've taken the, the time to just get a piece of uh, sandpaper and where I've got the, the raggedy bits inside, I've just basically smoothed that down and oops, I've also cleaned off the tape from this section and I also used some nail polish removed from the wife's drawer, don't tell her, um, to just get rid of any um, sort of glue that came off the sellotape. Tried that in there and I just get it to the section of liners and push in. That looks about right and I've got put my thumb there. There we go. I've got that much, you see that? That much going in. So I'm hoping that's enough. It didn't seem to have a great deal to start with when it was uh, unbroken. But anyway, I've cleaned up the insides. Um, everything's looking good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to whip with that polyester cotton around the outside for the first inch or so. The idea being that that will be lightweight and it'll also give me um, strength around this section here. And remember it's only the sort of first inch that was broken so I'm just going to whip around that with this cotton. If you've got some whipping silk or whatever, great, but you know, polyester cotton will do for the job. It's a good job the arthritis is in this hand because it would be a lot more painful than it actually is. Luckily, this thumb's not so bad for arthritis at the moment. Right, so I'll do this for about an inch and then we'll close it off and we'll put another layer of that epoxy over the top. Getting plenty on just to uh, make sure it soaks in through the, the cotton. I always smooth it off a bit later with the, the brush if I need to, but I think for this one, too much is better than too little for now. And I think I'm actually going to go all the way up the plastic as well and off the end. I've got a bit of stuff left over, so might as well. Can't hurt, and it's adding hardly any weight. And of course, I do realise that this is going to unbalance the pole. I know the whole thing probably only weighs. I don't know, maybe 20 grams less than an ounce and of course it doesn't sound like a lot but in terms of halfway up a pole it's going to upset the balance somewhat but as I said I'm stuck with having to use a pole and this is the only one I've got. I'm going to go with that so the next thing is we're going to go test this down at Dens Pond in a couple of days time once it's all dried up. At least if I've caught a few fish on it, before I go and fish that big tournament, I'm going to feel a bit happier about it. But anyway, look, that's it. Worst case, worst, worst case, if this all breaks, my old good mate Mozza has got a second pole that um, he says I can borrow. Now, I've seen that pole, and it's what he calls a, a makey-uppy pole. In other words, it's a bunch of different pole stations, mostly taped together, some of which are telescopic and whatever, but he's a good old soul. So I'm not going to complain. If you listen to this, Morris, I know you will. I'm only taking the mickey, mate. Thanks very much for that. But as you said, maybe I'll take your best hole and you can use the mickey up you want. But look, joking aside, that's it. We're done. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I hope this works. So look, I'll see you next time on the bank with the repaired pole and we'll see how we go. Have a good one. Bye for now.